All right, everybody, welcome back to another episode of Movie Talks and Chill. We're your hosts. I'm Tony Serrato. I'm Gavin Butts. I'm Patrick Wall. And with us joining us... Yo, you already know the deal. It's your boy, Big B, your favorite host of the Sunscreen Film Festival. Well, welcome, <laughs> sir. Good to have you. Yeah, it's good to have you guys, too. Man, I like that. awesome. I love uh, spending time with you guys. It's been a while. Man. Yes, it's been it a while. Has. It's been a whole year so, already. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we were recording at my place last time. That, yeah, that's, that's right. over in Feather Sound. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. But we started using video, and I get too much natural light. Way too much natural light. Uh, yeah. Blew us out. <coughs> and I was like, we need to, we need to just go you know, here. We, we tried it at each of our places. They're like, you know what, let's just... Have Which is place. weird because I hate natural light. Like I, I have everything closed. I, w- I was gonna, I was gonna come up with a joke, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you guys are natural uh, uh, light bounces. So, yeah. You know, you know, if we need to white, oh, balance, okay. yeah, white balance the camera, we just pull up your shirt and you're like, oh, white balance. <laughs> So we wanted to have you join us. You know, we reach out. You know, we've been talking back and forth. Uh, yeah. You know, obviously, it's been a whole year. Sunscreen is back already. A whole year. Which man. is exciting. It is. It is. Um, we literally, especially my department, so and the advertisement and promotion side, like, we really don't get a chance to, like, stop. Mm-hmm. Well, we take vacations and stuff, but... <laughs> um, the moment that the it was submission... An, it was an hour left for last year. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> I went at home, I was like, all right, time to go to bed, vacation, poop, oh, sunscreen. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, dang it. <laughs> uh, no, but it's been it's been incredible, um, a complete blessing just to be a part of the team and, you know, um, just seeing how, like, much the, the festival has grown. I don't know if you guys seen the article recently. Um, no. But... I love the Berg uh, posted an article basically saying that we, over the last couple of years, have generated over forty million. I saw that. Oh wow! I think I reposted million. that feed. I yeah, think. Yeah. yeah, I think you did. Um, <coughs> that's incredible to, to to actually see that and and realize that our little big fest, festival mm-hmm. has generated that much money into this town. You oh, know, absolutely! That's a great. <coughs> this is a great event. You know? It's it's not only generated you know I mean the money is huge right. but I mean just the draw of attention of people um, you know you, you finding more and more people and then through network or people right. hearing and then you know they come here and make a movie I think they're they're posting I just recently saw there's going to be a movie that was just made in Tampa okay. um, by a USF grad I believe and it's going to be in a limited theaters in this area really yeah and it was i just it just came out the art it was on the news the other day on wfla or something like yeah. that and i it was too late but i was like had that you know been months ago we could have said hey you know why don't you throw it out at the sunscreen but yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> um yeah because well we actually shut down our submissions i think in january i think january 13th yeah. or something like that or yeah january 13th and um and we still had people messaging us like, hey, is it too late? Hey, is it too late? <laughs> like, honestly, over the last, like, couple years, the buzz of, like, sunscreen has definitely grown. Mm-hmm. Um, Which is awesome. It's <laughs> a great film festival. Like, this is the, this sunscreen was the first one I've been to. Mm-hmm. And I was like, wow, this is a lot cooler <laughs> than I thought film festivals mm-hmm. would actually be. Yeah. <laughs> Um, since then, I've been to one the Dunedin one, right? Um, and I was, yeah, so. and, and and we we actually, Cameron is like, I guess you could say like our our sister. Oh, okay. You know, so like we actually help her out a lot with Dunedin. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we want to see that grow, and you know, with Tony, especially if anybody is willing to learn, like he he doesn't mind like yeah, you know, teaching them the like the ropes and stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously you're gonna be on your own and, and create your own style and your own culture, but. Mm. You know, if you're willing to learn and, and take advice from us, then mm-hmm. then hey, like we can we can definitely help you out. Right. And to see how successful that's been going, you know, I, I kind of feel like, oh, that's that's my sister. Like, <laughs> she's, she's doing great. <laughs> well, the the other cool thing is, you know, from, from our standpoint, mm-hmm. um, is you know, like we talked, you know, we're at the film festival last year, well, the year before that, but last year was a major, even bigger success for us. I mean, yeah. huge success for you guys. Uh, but you know, we just had an unexpected number of interviews actually, right. and people like, "Oh, this is so cool." Well, since then, there's been multiple people that we've uh, you know met there or met through people through people in social media, right. and just reached out, be like, "Hey, we know so and so. We met them here." Like uh, we, the girl mm-hmm. Haley, 
Yeah. So there's a girl. She used to live in Sarasota. Yeah. She'd been to Sunscreen, knows Tony. Right. Um, She's in Atlanta now. And so we reached out to her, you know, did a friend request thing and then talked about it. She's joined our show like two or three times now. She loves it. She texts me all the time. She's like, hey, you want to come down there? She might be coming down to the festival. Uh, We're not sure yet. She told me she wanted to. Um, But, you know, she does like, uh, I think it was what, PA work. Yeah, but she she's a um, like on... key PA. She's like <coughs> yeah, number she... one of the PAs. Okay, yeah. on set. Yeah, yeah, so she does that type of film. But like her you know, goal we... is to be a director, like the new Coppola. Yeah. So yeah, she's she did just like working a... her way up from there. Yeah, she did like a, you know, she was on this game show or something. It was oh, yeah. pretty funny. Um, but she's doing well. But like we met her because we met people at the film festival that knew her. And then right. there was somebody else that she knew that reached out to us and then that person was somewhere else out of, out of the country or in the oh. country we've stayed in touch with uh darwin yeah mm-hmm. darwin and yeah. Dar- <laughs> darwin darwin is like a uh like he's like a brother to me yep <laughs> um he texts me <laughs> all the time i was like hey big dog like we come in you know <laughs> him and, and still stephen wilbur like they yep. they're like you know here's the thing is when you have filmmakers like uh, Darwin, we have uh, filmmakers like um, Austin Spicer or like a like an Andrew Kiriskiro, um who literally they they understand the culture. Mm-hmm. Those are the ones that you like. You know what? Those guys are cool. Mm-hmm. If they send a film in, we know that it's going to be a good time. Those are good people. They're going to bring a crowd. Like yeah. they're just genuine good people. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Yeah. I don't think I've seen Darwin without an entourage around him. Like yeah. He's or walking around. Or oh, small. Oh, yeah. Or definitely. Yeah. 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 Or not in an event. Yeah. This yeah. Time, I'm like, dude, this a whole year. That's, He's everywhere. That guy's everywhere. He actually reached out to, to us. Oh, when he was in Spain, right? <clears throat> mm-hmm. Yeah, he was. Oh, in, yeah, he was in Spain, and he was at one of the film festivals there, and or Barcelona, I think it was. Yeah, mm-hmm. Barcelona. Yeah. He reaches out to us in my messenger, and he says, "Hey, man, you know, I'm out here. I got a bunch of really cool people. It's like midday. I'm at my day job. Yeah. And he's like, can we can we do a quick podcast? Can we get them on there? We'll do it remote. I'll get on my phone right now. I'm yeah. like." Hang on. I was like, I would love to, man, but we're on three different locations. Yeah. I'm actually have a day job. I didn't know if I was full disclosure on that. Yeah. But I was like, I, I wish this was my day job. Right. Um, and we'll get there eventually. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. But, but it was kind of cool. He's like, yeah, I got all these people out here. And so I'm like, so we're just getting contacted from Barcelona. to be. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that's, that's been the cool thing. And I think it's a testament to what you guys do and letting us come out there. And, you know, mm-hmm. Tony letting us come out. And doing our thing is now, you know, we're growing and making contacts with with people as well in the industry, and yeah, and it's great, it's a good thing. So, so like, let's keep going on that, you know, because when you think about the culture of a of a film festival, right? Mm-hmm. So you go, um, you submit your film, and you premiere it, and you network, right? Mm-hmm. But what makes us a little different um, is the fact that <clears throat> I realize going to different film festivals. You don't really get a chance to meet the people behind the curtain, mm-hmm. you know. And with us, we'll pull up a chair, you know. We'll show share a drink with you, talk, hang out, you know. And it's very authentic. Yeah, yeah. You know, most of these companies they're run by like a major like sponsor or something like that, and it's mm-hmm. all kind of you know corporate minded. Yeah. You don't get those one on ones with everyone, you know. And that's the cool thing with like talking with you guys. It's like. Mm-hmm. The same feeling, like, hey, we're in someone's apartment. We're, you know, we're shooting, you know, this podcast. That's the mm. same thing. It's like with sunscreen. We want to make it feel like, hey, you're at our house. Come yep. chill. Come gotcha. hang out. Come watch a movie. We're gonna we're gonna have a good time. And, oh, yeah. and it's all about the community. And and literally, it's just like a, um, it, honestly, it's like a family. Like yeah. how you said with with Darwin. Like Darwin will, will literally call you up or text you. Um, <laughs> And say like, hey, um, we want to be on the podcast. Yep. You know, it's the same thing. There's a few filmmakers that didn't even get a chance to make it in because we had so many films this yep. year. Mm-hmm. We had 507 films submitted. Damn. We broke the record. Nice. Another, another record. <laughs> nice. <laughs> you know, um, that's a lot of that's a lot of films. But also too, a lot of people were taking what we taught them last year and applied it to this year. Mm. And we seen that. And that's what made this community grow. But if it wasn't for that motivation, that connection with the filmmakers, I don't think we would have got this type of buzz the way that we we have over the last like couple of years. Mm-hmm. But it's because of the culture that we built. And that's important. Culture will also affect any way that the filmmaker will affect uh, while they're on production. 
when they come to your festival, like if you have great culture, then to me, honestly, that's that's how you're gonna grow and be successful. Absolutely, and I, I think that's that's what you guys do very well. You know, you you create that culture, but also that that comfort level. Like yeah. you just, yeah. it's, it's you feel at home. Mm-hmm. You know, at ease. Um, <clears throat> and you know, even when we talked, that you know, we talked about it before, but. You know, even when we had guests on last year, you know, the, the first thing without us asking, we didn't have to ask anybody this question. We asked them a lot of questions, but not this one. <laughs> Everybody would jump in with, uh, this is the best film festival I've yeah. ever been to. Or this is the greatest. Or uh, they, they, they made comments. I can't remember all of them. I've actually got the sound bites still saved from it. Yeah, yeah. I was listening <clears> to <throat> a, few, but, uh, a few of them. Yeah, it's basically like, you know, <clears throat> you know, this place is, you know, it, it's, it's friendly. Mm-hmm. It's it, <clears throat> it's got a nice relaxed vibe. You know, we're still here to to promote what we're doing, right. celebrate our vision. You know, talk about stuff, but at the same time, like you said, you can go up to the people behind the curtain or you know behind mm-hmm. the scenes or the guys running it, like you, Doug, Ben. You know, everybody mm-hmm. that's involved, Cameron, and all the and yeah. everybody that volunteers. I, I do have to mention that the volunteers are phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we actually got to sit down with <clears throat> a couple of them last year. Yeah, that was yeah. our goal last year. Was like you know we talked. We, we had a, a bunch of interviews and they were all phenomenal, but it was all with the filmmakers and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. We wanted to get some perspective from the people that actually were part of it. Like, yeah. uh, that's what, you know, we have, have had you on before and you're right. on again and, you know, Doug comes on. But also we wanted to get some of the volunteers' perspective too. Yeah. See, see what got them into wanting to do it and really, really good, solid interviews there. You know, a lot of good information, but... Everybody said the same thing. It was like, this is the mm. best place to be, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Unprompted. <laughs> that's oh, yeah. great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no one saw the electrodes we put on their chair. But no. anyway, <laughs> and I think even one of the best for <laughs> so screen. So screen. Uh, <laughs> there is the best film festival. <laughs> but I think it was even that um, that guy. I think his name was is Merv something. I can't remember his last name. The guy from Ireland. Mm-hmm. Mm. He was there, and he had done. I think it was on a Sunday. This right. was, was a on, horror film, right? <clears throat> uh, no, I, I don't know if it was or not. I don't think so. But it it was a I think it was a short film. Mm-hmm. It was a short. Um, okay. But he came up and he he had no idea he'd been there all weekend and it, his his film was coming out that Sunday I think it was in the afternoon because we were we were there most of the day and right. then we were kind of wrapping up because we know everybody's kind of wrapping up everything <clears throat> and he's like oh do you have time and he's like yeah come on over right and we sat down with him you have and, time we have time yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so we got him but he was just like he. He had a really good interview too. Like he yeah. was just so enthralled, and he's from Ireland. Came over from Ireland mm-hmm. here to do you know this film festival and some other film festivals and stuff. And well, he just had a blast, and it's just it, that was cool. Like last year, we got to meet a lot of more local people, mm-hmm. except for what's his name, Alejandro. Um, yeah, no, 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 not last year. I'm sorry, the first year. Oh, um, oh, oh, the Polish guy. Yeah, yeah, the the, um, the, guy that the one that the, did the Bitcoin, Bitcoin movie. movie. Yeah, um, I yeah. still have the movie saved. Let me see if I can. Find yeah, so it. he was he had joined his first year, but and but that was really the only person like really out of the country. Everybody right. was more local or you know yeah. close by. Um, this year we got to meet like all these people from all yeah. over, and that was that was even cooler for us too. This year we have <laughs> over sixty five local films. Nice. <laughs> um, our our slogan is basically we are a film festival made by filmmakers for filmmakers Mm -hmm. um you know as the city is growing there is a lot of competition that is moving in and a lot of these people are coming from the west you know they're coming from la they're coming from new york with the bigger (laughs) <laughs> with the bigger productions out there, they come down to a place like Florida and mm-hmm. they move to St. Pete. It's cakewalk for these people. So seeing the different quality that's been coming in, mm-hmm. it's been a blessing because, you know, <laughs> if you've ever been to other film festivals, <laughs> you know, and we, we've had them too. You know, we, you have to give everyone a shot. Yeah. But sometimes there, <laughs> there are different films that are just like, Hey no, bro. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you got you got to go back to the basics. So. I, I appreciate the vision, but <laughs> but yeah, it needs some work. It, it needs work. some work. But to be honest with you, I even had this conversation with Doug. Like it was so hard to choose this year. That's why we we have um, over two hundred uh, films this year because mm-hmm. everyone came with their their A game. 
Yeah, and they stepped it up. Doug allowed us to uh, <laughs> review some of the submissions for you guys. And yeah, we were we were so doing what you guys some think? screeners. Yeah, no, I, 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 there was a lot that I really loved. Again, there was a couple may need right. work, and and also like when you when he sent them to us, um, like he didn't tell us who they were by really. Right. Like he didn't say if they were you know from a high school or right. from this, and I thought that was great. Um, but no, there's a there's a lot that I watched that I thought were like award winning. Mm-hmm. Um, there were a lot that I thought would definitely needed to be seen. Yeah. Um, and I, I really had a good time with it, though. It was- the favorite movie that I watched, it's a um, six and a half minute short, made it into a block on Saturday. Right. And I'm going to try and sneak away and go watch that. Like, I want to see it again. It's called Salem 1692. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, right. yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so let's talk about that. Uh, <laughs> so those guys, um, I actually got a chance to work with their father. Oh really? Their father is uh, a co-star in Savage, the okay. movie that I'm I'm starring. In. Oh nice. Okay. Um, oh, I saw the photos from the from you shooting. That's the one with like the seven the, foot two that is just ripped from head to toe. <laughs> he's actually six foot two. Oh. Um, yeah, Cody Cody Bobe. He's or six foot one. Okay. He's, so he's the massive. same height as me. <laughs> yeah, but he he's can just, crush me like a beer can. Yeah, <laughs> this guy is. He's a um, hydroxy cut uh, spokesperson. He had it on the set. We were we were taking it. We, like on that set, we made sure we were fit and, and healthy. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that. So that movie was was incredible to work on. Um, directed by uh, Ryan Justice, and it was all shot here in oh, and okay. in, in St. Pete. We shot it from um, Lakeland all the way down here, and um, yeah, Cody is Cody was such a great guy to work with and inspiration. Mm. Um, because when you look at him, you're like, I, <laughs> I am not doing what I need to do. Yeah. In the gym. <laughs> I need to go to the gym constantly. <laughs> I need to go. To the, so the moment I saw his photo when when Ryan was like, "Hey, uh, I'm gonna have you fight him," in the movie, <laughs> I was like. Uh, what? <laughs> bro, who is this monster <laughs> that I got to fight? You want me to fight this guy? He said, yeah. So I just ate. I There was no way that I was able to get that rip in the short <laughs> amount of time that I had. Luckily, uh, we had to delay production uh, due to some other location complications and stuff. And... Um, yeah, I just went to the gym and just was like, I don't care. I'm eating pizza or whatever. I just needed to get large. <laughs> <laughs> I just needed to get. I needed to get buff and just look bulky, or whatever. Now I'm I'm leaning out um, since the movie, but that guy is huge. He he's looks just, huge and he's strong. <laughs> oh, I bet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm not to give away. Uh, any details he was just warming up one day just bench pressing a car (laughs) (laughs) we were I'm Arnold I'm getting ready for this set (laughs) we we were doing choreography and um, there's one part of the choreography where he takes me he slings me we're doing yeah so we're we're doing choreography (laughs) and we're practicing and he does the swing, and I literally, if I didn't catch myself, I would have literally, I would have just went over and fall and, and, and just dove right into the mats. Um, yeah, he, he's he's a, he's a big guy, strong guy. But um, but speaking of the other movie, mm. uh, my co-star Benny Bernard, those are his sons who did sixteen ninety two. Yes, that's dope. Yeah, because <laughs> um, the fight scene in that movie was amazing. I yeah. loved it. So cool thing about him. I think he was originally from uh, Orlando, um, and his whole family got into like the the movie business. So he's been an actor for like I'm gonna say almost like twelve years, maybe thirteen years now. Oh wow! And his, and his sons um, are stunt doubles uh, for like major ma- major uh, uh, movies out there. Um, one of them did um, Blue Beetle was a stunt double for that, um, and then on Disney Plus, what was the the werewolf movie. What was it? The, Teen Wolf? No, not well, Teen not, Wolf. Uh, the, I think it was like the Night of the Wolf or the... Oh. It was the one that was all in black and white. Yeah. yeah. Um, it was made by Marvel. <laughs> Shoot. Red, fantastic rectangle there. Yeah. <laughs> fantastic rectangle there. I can't, I can't remember... I can't remember the name. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, fantastic yeah, rectangle. Rectangle. Like, um... So his sons actually... Uh, they're a stunt double for a lot of these guys for like Marvel. They're actually going to be here. 
Oh, nice. And, um, it's called Werewolf by Night. Yes, Werewolf by Night. That that's that's the movie. Um, yeah, so they're they're great kids. Uh, I don't even call them kids because they're they're well over twenty five. So. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Funny how you get older and how the kid kid, kid aspect. And I'm like, yeah, I remember being. I graduated high school. I was like, look here, kid. Like, I I graduated high school. I'm not a kid. I was totally a kid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everyone thinks just because I'm in my late 30s, I'm an adult. Like, let's clear this up. I am not. You're not an adult. <laughs> and uh, let's clear yeah, another thing up. 40. You're almost 40. Yeah, I was gonna say. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'll, it's a, I'll be. It's, it's a very wide late thirties range. <laughs> I'll, I'll be. I'll be thirty two next month. So time flies. Oh, like I. I started. I started working for Sunscreen when I was nineteen. Mm-hmm. I came on as a, well, a volunteer slash intern. Because when you work for Sunscreen, you don't. You don't really. <laughs> sometimes you don't. You don't. You're not volunteer. doing it for the pay. Yeah, yeah. yeah right. <laughs> it, it, it comes more of a a job at that point. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and then to fast forward now, it's like 12 years later, mm-hmm. and um, to see where the festival's grown, it's in, it's incredible. The quality that we're getting mm-hmm. is is incredible. So I'm ready for the next 10 years to see where it's going. Yeah. So I'm excited for it. <clears throat> oh, we're excited too. And so speaking of that though, so for this year, I mean, I know there was some social media posts about you know. The schedule's out now, and mm-hmm. we've been telling people, you know, check out sunscreenfilmfestival.com or the Facebook page, and we actually have you guys as a partnership with us on our website, okay. so there's a link there, um, but can you kind of give us an idea, like, what, what does this year look like? Like This year, um, like I said, our locals um, really stepped it up. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a couple directors here. To have like some really good quality like films like obviously Savage uh, from Ryan Justice. Um, there's another director <clears throat> named Austin Spicer. Um, I was at, literally on the phone with him like maybe three or four days ago, and I remember when this kid, he was younger than me, um, when he was writing this film, and um, to see where it's at now. I think Doug, um, I think Doug is a, is a producer on the film as well, mm. and. Uh, we have uh, Anthony Lolly uh, with Lolly Productions. Mm-hmm. They have a production called The Guru, which is basically about this um, this personal trainer who helped all these different bodybuilders and everything. And it, it's that that's going to be a phenomenal one as well. Um, the shorts, the shorts this year, <laughs> high school and college block. Mm-hmm. You guys get ready for that because these kids they. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, phenomenal. They're they're all great. <laughs> I'm just like so proud of them and 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 looking at their teachers and I'm like, you guys are doing this. You mm-hmm. guys are teaching them. And um, but to look at the the new generation, the one thing I, I realized about these newer filmmakers, they're fearless. They'll mm-hmm. try anything, mm-hmm. and they're okay with. Because remember we were talking about last year where there is that kind of gap between. Um, the entitlement, like, hey, you should do this for me because yeah, I want it, yeah. <laughs> and without the work. But <clears throat> the younger ones that are coming in now, it's a whole different mindset. Is it mm-hmm. like like night and day? Like I feel like the the group from last year kind of like like it died off. Like whatever their mentality was was like, you yeah. know what? No, we're gonna stay humble. We're gonna we're gonna listen to what we need. <laughs> um, need to learn and then we're going to apply it and we're going to go do it and they're just just fearless with it so you can see it in the work um, so I'm really excited with the high school and, and college block um, from my perspective yeah. but well the group we used to <coughs> last year most of them got accepted into Barney's <sighs> and two of them were juniors and they were hoping to apply yeah. like, this year yeah mm-hmm. so you can see that like what yeah. type of quality we're getting you mm-hmm. know these, these kids are and, and now when you think about it so when we started film uh, back in the day, how much was a camera? It was a lot. <laughs> it was a lot. I, I know mine when I did it was, and I bought a Canon XL2. Right. Uh, that thing, I think, and it had been out for a while, so there was two models after that, so I bought a little bit later. Right. I think it was still like $16,000. And that was a prototype digital camera. Looked like it. <laughs> it, was, it was an awesome camera, don't get me wrong, but... Yep. Yep. And now you can go on Amazon. Even editing software now, a lot of that 
<clears throat> like the start of it is is free. <clears throat> Like right. the basic options are free to get in there, you know, to do lighting software and stuff. But now uh, you pay to get that that extra. Yeah, extra. Yeah, yeah, that's what they hit you. It, right. <laughs> well, exactly. I, mean, I love my Premiere Pro. I always, I will always pay for the Adobe Creative Cloud. Right. Well, I love like those to that programs. point, like even Doug, one time he was on, we were talking about it, and you back even before when I was doing film, mm-hmm. like you know, the only way to edit, I mean, unless you you had to have like you know Final Cut or Avid. Right. And an Avid editing system, you had to have an Avid built system. Like, it was its own thing. It wasn't right, like, it was like a little box, like, right? Yeah, it wasn't like a PC that you just, hey, download the software real quick. Mm-hmm. No, it came with, you know, it was a box, but then it came with, you know, your your sliders and all mm-hmm. the other stuff. Like, it was a, it was all, you almost had to have a studio yeah. to have it. And that thing alone was like, I think, $25,000, somewhere around there. Um, but even when I first got, I was lucky enough when I got my Premiere or my Adobe creative suite <clears throat> i was actually going to the art institute of tampa at the time so they would give you the student discount yeah. version <clears throat> so i was able to get it for like 500 which was a steal mm-hmm. but the normal one was still like 1500 and that school's gone yeah this school's <laughs> gone now <laughs> yeah <laughs> so let's not even get into that yeah That's whole, I'll, I'll tell you offline <laughs> what happened <laughs> um no but see that that's the thing it's like the challenge that we had with the equipment whether it had to be like really expensive or it was just a bunch of loopholes you had to jump through just yep. to get something downloaded now look at it everything is all cloud based and you know you can get a starter camera for maybe anywhere between you know 1800 bucks to like maybe three thousand dollars yeah you know and that's a really that's good compared, starter camera, yeah, yeah. A starting camera like <clears throat> you know most of these cameras now they shoot it anywhere up to like four to six k Yep. Mm-hmm. You know, so when you when you think about it, like somebody who really wanted to apply to themselves and learn this, they can be really successful because yeah. it's like now you can go to T-Mobile and get a camera that would rival the thing he bought 10, 15 years ago. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, it's on your phone, yeah. you know. So when you think about it, it's like what is really stopping you? Yep. You know, um, I was thinking about <clears throat> it last night. <clears throat> It's really the, the 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 beauty of the mind is really creative because when you think about it, we think about literally nothing, and then we can come up with an imagination and we can form that into something that is tangible, yeah, that is entertaining to others. Yep. So our mind is a very powerful when you really think about that, and it's 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 crazy. It's like wait, I'm getting paid for my imagination. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Like, this is really happening. Mm-hmm. Like, I can make money from this. Yep. So, when you put those two factors together, having a, <clears throat> a really good imagination with really good equipment, the opportunities are endless. And I'll add one other thing to that, too. So, <clears throat> even before back then, once you were done with your movie, mm-hmm. you either had to put it on a DVD. Or basically, that was it. You had to put it on a DVD if you wanted anybody to see it. You had to be mm-hmm. able to duplicate those DVDs. Find a place that even had something that could put it on the screen if you were even able to get there just to show it. Yeah. You can throw it right up in YouTube right now. Yeah. You know, n- nowadays mm-hmm. you can get your f- movie out there to right. everybody in the entire world. Before, yep. I couldn't even get the city of Largo right. to see something <laughs> at the time because you didn't, like, there was not a lot of places that could do it. Like, right. you know, you're not going to walk into, like, a Regal Cinemas and right. hand them a DVD and be like, here, put this up on your screen. Well, now they probably can, but. Right. You know, before it was yeah, all... you'd have to still... do it like airheads. You'd have to take the, you know, station hostage. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and what I'm saying is, like, you yeah. just didn't have a DVD player connected to the you right. know, projector. So it's like, you either had to invite people over or find a place that had that, you know, compatibility yeah. and and hope that people showed up and yeah. or rent a venue or something, whatever. I mean, there was a lot of things that you had to go through just to get it seen. <clears throat> but now you just... Yeah. You have a YouTube account, you throw it up there, you send the link to everybody on your Facebook and Instagram yeah. and Twitter pages, and bam, you have an audience. You got the audience. There was yeah. a 30-minute action movie that got <laughs> uploaded to YouTube, and it was so good, Netflix bought it. And supposedly they're working on a sequel, but it's been in development hell for like two years. What's the name of it? Kung Fury. Oh, yeah! yeah that, oh, I love that movie. I think that came out a little bit. Like 2016? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was about like six or seven years ago. Yep. Uh, I remember that. I remember how... I saw the um, what was it the Kickstarter mm. for Kong Fury, 
and then it finally came out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it was, it was so it was, so ridiculous, but it was good. It was right. just like I love it was that. like retro eighties like yeah. the Sith Wave War with a dinosaur. Yeah. It's like <laughs> a triceratop. Yeah. Hitler shoots the captain through the cell phone that's the size of like a brick. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Looked like Zach Morris's phone from Saved by the Bell. <laughs> well, and a couple of the quick points too. <clears throat> you know, we're talking about you know like the comparison of cost and, and availability or getting right. it out there too. But even lighting, even sound, uh-huh. the equipment mm-hmm. has become so much more affordable. I'm not going to say cheaper because that sounds makes it yeah. sound bad, but it's more affordable. Yeah, <clears throat> it's, achie- it's achievable. Like you know, like I said, a, a person can go out, you know, catch a couple gigs here and there. And go buy some equipment. Yep. They can drive Uber or something like that yep. on, a, on a day and literally buy a piece of equipment just yep. like that. That's how cheap it is now. Yeah. And, and you could be like, it's not like the days of, okay, I need to get funding, whether you go to family or outside people, right. be like, I need, <clears throat> yo, $100,000, $200,000. Now you could say, I need five to 10 grand. Yeah. Which is still a lot of money, but that's a, a lot easier sell than trying to get a couple hundred thousand, thousand from dollars. somebody, you know, or, or from multiple and also people. And also, it's easier to, like, pool that money, too, because you can do, like, a, you know, Cash App or Venmo or, mm-hmm. or uh, a GoFundMe. Like, yeah. like, you can actually... all that. Exactly, yeah. You've got places where you can advertise without even saying what the true full nature of it is. Right. Oh, I'm doing a project on uh, the community. Yeah. And then it's like, well, the community is in it. I'm filming here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, just to even think about this, too, so... We're, we're talking about, you know, how accessible it is to get equipment. We're talking about, like, getting your, you know, your project out there, right? Um, I feel like the boom of film festivals really kind of kicked off from, like, 2016 and everything. Mm-hmm. And where, um, maybe a little bit earlier than that, but when I saw it coming out of college, I felt like, I felt like a lot of these, um, you know, college students were literally coming out and trying to do their own film festival. And I think at least in the local area that I've yeah. seen. And um, I, I feel like this is the best way to actually get your project out there. Yes, yeah. you can put it on YouTube, yeah. but um, you need to go through a filter. Absolutely. And I feel like film festivals is <coughs> that first glimpse of like, okay, um, how is the audience going to react to my project? Mm-hmm. Now, someone can argue and say, well, what if my film doesn't even get into the festival? Like, what can I do now? I was like, okay, well, show it to someone. Yeah. Uh, show it to a group. Uh, I don't say go out. It's really hard. Like, if you want to go ahead and go rent a theater on your own and then try to get it, it's... it's that's expensive. It's expensive. That's, that's yeah, an expensive you know? risk. Yeah. yeah. You know, you're better off <laughs> You're better off getting saving all that money, um, create you some, you know, Facebook and Instagram mm-hmm. ads, and go, you know, push it towards YouTube or something like that. Yeah. And I know a lot of people now, they're like, well, I could do self-distribution. But even with that, there's so much marketing dollars that you mm-hmm. have to pour into that. Mm-hmm. And honestly, I, I feel like taking your film to a film festival is kind of the better route when you can get into a festival. Don't give up. Yeah. You know, there's some people who's like, well, you know, um, I'm trying to go to Sundance. Sundance have a they have a particular criteria on what films that they're looking for and there's a standard that goes along with that yeah and i feel like a lot of filmmakers need to understand it's like hey if you're a first-time filmmaker you're don't try to approach sundance and say hey look at my film yeah. you know i want i want to be in sundance and it's like <laughs> no it doesn't, it doesn't work like that like like those guys are like at the top you know even the austin film F- festival yeah south by southwest uh, South by Southwest, but there is a Austin. Oh, is there? Yeah, yeah, oh, okay. it's, it's just Austin Film Festival. Um, they are they are the top dogs, you know, yeah. and they're they're number one in the nation. Really? Yeah, they're beating out Sundance. Uh, yeah, because when you think of like Sundance, Sun once again, Sundance is owned by like a corporation. Oh, mm-hmm. okay, I did not that, know that. Sundance is its own organization that puts this thing on. So, um. But Austin Film Festival, I think it's like ran by like the Austin uh, Film Commission, just like how Sunscreen is. You mm-hmm. know how we have uh, St. Pete Film Commission. And you got Tampa, that's ran by uh, Tampa Film Commission. Like those are different than what the organization of Sundance mm-hmm. is. Yeah. But when you look, when you think about that, and you pay attention. Um, 
when you look at those festivals, they they all have standards. They all have things that you have to meet. And um, when you're a filmmaker, you need to do your research. Mm -hmm. You need to look at, okay, uh, what type of films um, that this this festival takes, you know? Uh, Should I create something that's going to be more tailored towards what their tastes are? You know, and most filmmakers are like, oh, I got this idea. I got this script. We're going to get this team. We're going to go out. We're going to get in. Yeah. And then they get butt hurt <laughs> because they didn't talk to anyone. Yeah. Say, right. Hey, what are you guys looking for? You know, uh, and some people don't even want to show up yeah. to the festival to even learn. They got workshops and everything. They can teach you right at the workshop and tell you, hey, um, you know, do what you love, but also. Try to try to create something, and it, and and it's sad. It's not really a political thing with these festivals, mm. but some of the festivals actually have a standard. Yeah, and they have things they want to showcase. They're <coughs> all festivals are are you know able to showcase, you know your talent, but it's like what are you bringing? And there's mm. certain ones that are niches, you know, like they got uh, action um, festivals. They have some of them on action sh- uh, shorts. Um, oh, they have some that are strictly horror. Oh yeah, they got they got strictly horror. horror. Yeah, they got they got horror festivals. Mm-hmm. They even got a um, an improv like comedy um, yep. um, festival that's out there. So if you don't do your research and figure out like how can my my artwork can get out there, then I kind of feel like you're shooting yourself in the foot. But the days of just like, hey, I'm just gonna throw my my project on YouTube and hope for the best. You're not you're not really going anywhere because a lot of people well, market saturated. Market, yeah. market saturated, mm-hmm. you know. And I think I remember going back to <clears throat> like you were talking about the like the the criteria. Mm-hmm. I could be wrong on this, but I'm pretty sure that Sundance, especially, they even used to have now, mind you, this is years ago, right? A specific format shot style, like you had to be in at least 16 millimeter, 35 right, millimeter. Right. Or if it was digital, it had to be up to this level of level. high definition. Yeah. It's like you couldn't just go into like, you know, regular old nineteen nineties handicam yeah. and get into Sundance. They'd right. be like, no, it's gotta be a film format or this or that. They've obviously changed because the times change, have changed. Yeah. Um, but even then you had to, you know, fit that stuff. Right. But also like you said about <clears throat> not just with sunscreen, but with other film festivals as well. The other point I'd say to that about why you should get into a film festival is okay, let's say if you get in and you show it, so you're not just people seeing it, but you're also the networking that can happen there. Mm-hmm. That's the big thing. The, the uh, constructive, you know, criticisms to right, it, right. Uh, or, you know, things like that, and the workshops. Mm-hmm. So it's like, yeah, you not only get to show your film, but now you're also, you meet, you meet and greet with people. You right. learn to network. Hey, I liked your project. Hey, I work on this. Would you... Or what did you do on there? I'm, yeah. you know, well, I, I wrote it. Well, I'm, I need a writer. You know, stuff like that. So just creating the network and also the workshops that are available is is worth it in itself. Yeah. Even if you don't, and if you don't get in, you should. I I agree with. That. I think you yeah, should still, still go come. to the festival yeah, yeah. and do those things. Yeah, because you never know who you're gonna meet. <clears throat> right. You know, I went to. Um, it was a horror festival out in Orlando, and um, you know, I go and kind of recruit different films and stuff, and. Um, didn't have a film to submit, but I was like, hey, I work for a festival, so I, I want to check you guys out. And um, the beauty of just going to another festival outside of your festival yeah. is a good thing because you learn what they do and, and how can you improve as a, as a festival director. And you go out and, and you realize it's like now you're networking with these other festival directors that are teaching you, hey, this is what we do. Uh, maybe you can apply this to um, your festival. So even as a festival director, like it is important to go to other festivals mm-hmm. and check them out and, and meet, you know, other filmmakers and, and other you know organizers that right. are putting on the show. And um, you know, don't limit yourself just because you you didn't get in. You know, I I, I know sometimes people's <coughs> mentalities are just kind of you know kind of shot sometimes because they feel discouraged. You know, don't let the the email of like, hey, you're not accepted, get you down. Like, how bad do you really want this? Like, if you really want to make it, put in the effort. You know, go out, get dressed up, be presentable, get your business cards and go out and shake hands because you just never know the person that you meet at the next film festival 
could be the person that can actually help you be more successful down the line. Mm-hmm. You have to you have to change your mentality about it. And you know, if if more people thought like that, then when they get those no's, when they get the yes, it'll be more appreciable. Right. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not like, yeah, I, I, like I I deserve this. Yeah, I, I deserve automatically it. Yeah. deserve it. It's, it's I earned it. Yeah. You know, it's a different mm-hmm. different thought process. Right. Then. Right. <clears throat> No, I agree 100%. Oh, definitely. Um, so for those people, you know, with our people, we always talk about the film festival. We always, because we love it so much. Um, <laughs> and we do. No, we do. And it's exciting. Like, I've been, that's all I've been talking to these guys I about. Like, we gotta we're get not getting paid to We got to get ready. We got to get ready. <laughs> um, but for those who, you know, our listeners who have have not, don't know about it, really kind of walk us through. So like Thursday, it's like Thursday through Sunday. So Thursday is the red carpet kickoff. Right. <clears throat> so, um Thursday night is, is, is definitely my baby. I, I, I love uh, Thursday night because it's sunscreen's red carpet experience. Mm-hmm. You know, um, it is literally like fashion week meets, you know, um, I guess you say like Sundance, you know. Yeah. Because everyone comes in and St. Pete is a very unique location. Mm-hmm. Um, it's all about the arts. So a lot of the locals, they they dress. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they come down to the, to the nines and it's just like. Wow, like <laughs> you, you, you put on a really good outfit, and even myself, like oh, I, I saw your jacket from last year. That thing was dope as hell. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm already working on the next one. Um, <laughs> I will be wearing my same shooting suit. <laughs> <laughs> um, my my Saturday night suit is definitely going to be um, something that I'm I'm putting a little bit more money into. I'm like, all right, I gotta step it up. But um, Thursday night, opening night. Um, we have an incredible opening film. Um, is Bayou uh, Art Wars, Artist Wars? I mean, um, such a great, such a great movie, you know. Um, and Friday, Friday is just jam packed with a lot of films. Saturday night is our award ceremony. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot I of guys, parts of it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and we. <laughs> A lot of people they they come out for that. Um, that's the interesting thing about our parties. Like people, some people they just show up just to be at the party because of the networking yeah. side mm-hmm. of things, uh-huh. um, and it's really cool. Um, and then Sunday, Sunday is jam packed with a lot of like local filmmakers mm-hmm. and everything throughout the whole <laughs> festival. I mean, just everyone is is there just to just to have like a good time, but. All four days, we're looking to have over 200 filmmakers there. Yeah. Um, an amazing thing. Over the last couple of years, we had about... Last year, I think we had 6,000. The previous year, we had 7,000 people mm-hmm. uh, all four days. So, yeah, that's what you can actually expect. Just, you know, come expecting to, you know, become a part of the family. Um, mm-hmm. To make good friends. Um to also maybe get you know onto your next like feature film with these people, yep. you know, and once you once you make those connections, like don't give up, you yeah, know, just keep it moving and, and make sure that like um, our environment is like growing, like keep the mm-hmm. culture growing. So and one thing I I would also recommend to people, <clears throat> and I think you would agree on this, mm-hmm. you know, as we all know. Life happens sometimes, but right. if you do make that networking with somebody mm-hmm. and you're going to work with them on something and you make that promissory, I will get this to you by this time, or hey, I, yeah. you know, I'll reach out to you. I want to do it. Reach back out to them. Make right. sure yeah. you're keeping that contact. Keep don't wait, don't yeah, wait yeah. five months and be like, hey, so sorry about that. I meant to call you. <laughs> and then, you know, because you go through all this, you know, work and trouble of trying to get this connection and then you're just going to just let kind it of let it out. slide away because. Yeah. As a person who used to be in the industry myself, I, I knew that was the biggest thing is like <clears throat> you've got to treat it, even if you're putting out your own money or you're not making money right. while you're doing it, you've got to treat it like it's a job, right. like it's a responsibility. You know, have fun with it, enjoy mm-hmm. it, but don't be the person that just falls off the radar and then you come back like if you said to me, hey man, I got this movie, I want you to be a part of it. Yeah, I can do your camera work. Yeah, mm-hmm. call me and then. I go off the radar for a couple months, and I'm like, hey, man, when are we going to... Well, we're already shooting. Yeah. 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 I called you seven times. I emailed you eight yeah. times. You didn't respond to me. What had happened was... Not bad, man. You know, I was, uh, you know, I overslept and one day, and then the rest of the months, I was, you know, 
eating and didn't feel like doing anything. You know, it's like <laughs> I was combing my hair. <laughs> so, uh, just for the listeners, that would be my recommendation. When you make a contact, stick yeah. to mm-hmm. your, you know, stick to your guns, stick to your commitments, because uh, mm-hmm. then once you prove to somebody. I can count on this person, right? And you're good at what you do. There's right, a combination right. too, um, you know. Then you're solid, you know. Then you can. Right. Then that's the person they're going to be coming to again, yeah. And vice versa. And thankfully, in the indie <coughs> film market, we haven't ran into too many people that will say, "Hey, I want to be on the show," and then we hear we don't hear from them for like six months. Nine times out of ten, when a filmmaker says, "Hey, we want to be on your show. This sounds great." Sometimes little logistical issues come up, but they right. usually follow up and they Ooh. they do. They come on. Yeah, yeah. That's one thing we've been really lucky with is just the people that have reached out to us. Just, right. just hey, we want to be on your show, and then we get back with them, and then they do, and then they're excited about it. So you know, we that that's what makes this really fun for us. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Good times, man. Yeah. It's good times. <laughs> time. So Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, all all day and throughout the evening, it's going to be you know movies playing, different yeah, blocks. Movie, yeah, different blocks. <clears throat> Obviously, Saturday night, like you said, it's kind of the award ceremony, the after party, the yeah. big after party. Thursday's the big red carpet premiere. And I, I will say this, uh, Saturday night award ceremony, um, we end it with the famous karaoke battle. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, that is definitely Tony Armour's thing. Yep. Um, it's it's become more of a show <laughs> because once he kicks it off, then it's it's, it's, <laughs> it's a good time. It is definitely a good time. Um, I love I love that part of the festival. Yep. Um, you know, some people they get down with it. Some people they don't. You know, because maybe they don't know how to sing or anything but who cares you know at that point right. like you said like whatever you can remember yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of there's a, there's a lot of a lot of alcohol involved yeah, so. a, lot of, a lot of haziness yeah, there. yeah. so <laughs> liquid courage uh, will definitely be in effect uh, <laughs> if you want to get on that stage but overall like if anybody wanted to come to the festival I still encourage you to come um, be a part of this amazing festival in this community and uh, yeah it's just like if you didn't get a chance, and I'll say this again, if you didn't get a chance to make it in, you know, like still come out. Yeah. Because it's it's gonna be a good time. It's gonna be a party. Like mm-hmm. you're gonna meet people and these people might be able to help you out in your next film. So yep. I just wanna really get that out there. It's like don't get discouraged. Like yep. don't give up. Still come out, be a part of it. You know, it's and also it's like you said, good. you had five hundred submissions, but you only have enough room for like two hundred. Yeah. Yeah. So even though your movie may be great, like you, you still have like things you have to get cut. It's just mathematic. Yeah. And and sadly this year there was a, there was a lot of good ones that that got cut. <laughs> and me and Doug are trying to come up with another solution on like what do we do? You know, like a lot of these are good. You know, mm-hmm. and I had an extra day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I wish I wish we I wish we could, but we are in the works of doing something uh, fresh and new. Nice. Um, throughout the year, so because I I truly feel like we're gonna run into this situation a lot, mm-hmm. and um, there's some that, like I said before, they need to go back to the drawing board. But then yeah. there's mm-hmm. others that are like, oh man, this is really good, so we still want to show them. So we're in the works. We yeah. got some other things um, <laughs> that we can we can put out, and in the, in the virtual age of Zoom and YouTube, like having a virtual. <laughs> film festival isn't out of the question i'm sure logistically it's a nightmare but yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. definitely an option especially in the post-pandemic world yeah yeah well the, the other question i had too is so you know with the festival so <clears throat> you know we know you know the films that are going to be out there are the times and dates um i it, is there any of the workshops you could tell some of the people about like what what some of them might be uh this year <laughs> off the top of your head i didn't um, mean to put you on the spot there but no because you guys can check it out on the website but yeah. i just didn't know if there was anything you wanted to speak on or um oh yeah so <coughs> there's one that i i can speak on um uh, we, we're just now starting to finalize the list mm-hmm. and then everything for the, the workshop so the led volume um, and what that has created for the industry um, has completely changed um, the way that we do production after COVID. Uh, the production of Mandalorian has definitely catapulted this new way of filmmaking. I won't say it was new, but they kind of reinvented it. Um, because in the earlier days of filmmaking, um, they had like the rear projection 
mm -hmm. um, where they were like record something and then they put it in the background and then you can, you know, do like a car scene of a uh, someone driving down yeah, the street, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Well, with the LED volume, it's literally using um, Unreal Engine to create these these worlds, these environments. Um, where you don't really have to go out and go shoot the content. Mm -hmm. You can literally have a, a video game programmer create it right on the spot, and it could do real-time rendering. So this is changing the industry, and um, that is one of the workshops that I can definitely talk about that okay. we're going to bring to the festival this year because... <laughs> I can't you know, they're using Unreal Engine 5? Yes. That's, that's insane. Yeah. Yeah, never thought the applications could be outside of video games for that program. Yeah, um, I I was at uh, View uh, over in Tampa a couple years ago, and one guy was like, "Oh, if we want to put birds mm -hmm. flying in, I just program birds and and then like I think like thirty minutes later, um, like he came back and he was like, "Hey, look, we got the birds flying in." So it's, it's really it's really interesting programs that they're coming up with to make this more efficient. Um, you don't have to drive out to a location all the time. Right. Uh, but if you can, if you wanted to, you can go to a location, right? Mm. You can shoot the plate, mm. but then you can bring it back in Unreal and then add on different things. Right. That's kind of cool. Okay. So, <coughs> you know. So you still have the Grand Canyon. But yeah. Like, All right. What if the Grand Canyon flooded? Yeah. yeah you got the Grand <laughs> Canyon. You got, and Grand then you got water. You got water coming in, so okay. you can really create, you yeah. know, and add more elements to it. So, you know, bringing that to the festival um, and educating people on, you know, these different studios. Now you got View. Um, you have Lightweight Media um, that is literally in in the middle of production right now. Um, and there's another studio I think that is utilizing the the, the LED volume uh, program. Mm -hmm. So, to me, that's one of my exciting, most exciting um, uh, panels that we have. Nice, just you know, educating the people about that and see how cool it is. Because I've actually been to a couple sets already, where at view, it's like a half shaped dome, mm -hmm. and they got the ceiling, and like you literally you walk into this whole nother universe. So it's really been cool. Nice. nice. Come a far, long way since Alfred Hitchcock and the jostling yep. of the car and yeah. then like the, the projector in the background. In the background. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> no, that's that's all awesome. It's a lot of good information. We're coming up close to the end, but before we do, I just want to just uh, real quick. So you know, come out for the films. You know, the workshops. The workshops you got Q and As with you know with with the with different the filmmakers. filmmakers. Yeah. <clears throat> so they have Q and A's there. Uh, again, the after parties are always a good time. Yeah. Um, even the side workshops, I, I like the one that you guys do every year. It's usually done upstairs by like Ruth Chris. I think it's the chicks making flicks. Yeah. Are they doing yeah. that again this year? Yes, they are. That's awesome. That's a really cool because I, I saw them gathering up there and stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, but yeah, you can check out everything out there. I mean, they have everything, and they yeah. have you know great networking, <clears throat> and also I believe. If they're at the film festival, if there's like local eateries, are there some eateries where people get like some discount stuff? Yeah, yeah. Some... So, um, <coughs> so uh, two things I want to harp on this year. Um, so this year, um, one of the filmmaking um, parties is going to be at Birchwood, uh, Birchwood in the Canopy uh, on Beach Drive. That is going to be a really cool party. Uh, I've heard of the Birchwood. Never yeah. been. Oh, it's, oh, it's, it's a beautiful. Yeah, it's really beautiful. Um, we're actually doing a 70s theme uh, costume party. Oh, nice. Year. Tony, I need to borrow some clothes. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, definitely um, Friday night. Is it Friday night uh, fever? Yeah, yeah. Saturday night. Saturday night fever. Okay, yeah. yeah, you can tell I'm young. <laughs> <laughs> Saturday night fever vibe, you know. Um, come out, dress up, have, have, have a good time. Uh, we're actually going to have some special drinks. Um, they're going to be made uh, this year. Nice. Um, and I'll, with more detail, we'll be getting those drinks out there. But our bartenders this year are working on like a full, like really creative uh, uh, drink menu. And I think one of the drinks actually has a floating um, disco ball in it. Oh, nice. Uh, That's okay. kind of cool. Yeah. 
Yeah. That's awesome, Patrick, man. you can't have that. You'll swallow <laughs> this. <one>. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know um, that. I'm like, I live alone. Give him the chill proof drink. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sippy cup. <laughs> Can we make sure it's attached at the bottom of the cup? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But, you know, we, we are coming close to the end of time. But, uh, Brian, again, thank you so much yeah. for joining us talking sunscreen. You're more than welcome to come back if there's new updates before okay. it actually kicks off. I know it's right around the corner. we got, like, yeah. what, four or five weeks coming up here. Yeah, hopefully before. me and Doug can jump back on and, yeah. and yeah. We, can, we can do a bigger show. Yep. And, guys, just remember, as always, you know, check it out, you know, sunscreenfilmfestival.com. You can check it on the Facebook page. They have our link on our website and our partnerships. You can get to there. That will give you all the information to the workshops, panels, times, what movies, what blocks. Um, and I hear the podcast tickets. they have out there is kind of decent, too. Yep. <laughs> and, you'll, and we'll be there, too. Yeah, one of them sounds always, like a real yeah. asshole. <laughs> so, you know. Patrick? Yep. We will be there every day. Uh, we'll come out to meet and greet and say hello to everybody on Thursday for the red carpet. But yeah. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, we will be up in the mezzanine. Uh, we'll give more information on that as well. Um, to where we're going to be at, if you guys have been there before and have heard us before, then we'll be in the exact same spot. Um, <laughs> so just find the guys that are talking at the table. So, uh, But that's all the time we have for Movie Talks and Chill. For Movie Talks and Chill, we're your hosts. I'm Tony Serrano. I'm Gavin Butts. I'm Patrick Wall. And, and it's your boy, Big B. <laughs> all right, guys. Thank take, take care. Take care. Take care. <laughs>